Hello and welcome to our third video in our Unit 4 discussion of atomic theory and structure. Now, uh, we do have in your notes, if you look in your notes, there's a table we're going to be filling in and that table is going to be filled in via an activity that we have for you rather than having me lecture to you and just fill in the blanks. We're going to have you work through that and in fact the activity you did the other day where you lined up uh, the properties and, and sorted through the different families will help us with that. So hold that thought, we're not going to be doing that right now. Instead, we're going to run into a brief history of atomic theory. And what we want to focus on are the models and how the scientists tried to model their understanding of the atom. And we want to look at when they were right and where they went wrong. Now, going wrong in science is not necessarily a bad thing. It often can lead to good results. We have to realize that while there is a truth about the structure of atoms, or really any truth, while there is truth, our knowledge of that truth is uncertain. And so we're going to have to continually refine our models and our understanding of science. Now, because of that, it means we're going to be delving into a few more dead guy results. So you do have to memorize these guys. These are important and their work is very, very valuable in helping us understand the structure of the atom as we know it today. So let's get some terminology down quickly first. Really important to define what an atom is. We're going to be talking about a lot of particles and the simplest way or the, the most fundamental particle of matter that you could still say, wow, that's carbon, or man, that is clearly zinc, is the atom. Once you go smaller than the atom, you can't identify what it is. I suppose at some point it's like seeing me and you know that I'm a 52 year old woman and you can see that I have blonde hair and it's clearly me. But if you looked at my kidney, you might not know my kidney from somebody else's kidney. And that's true of these as well. I mean, a proton's a proton's a proton. Uh, it's not going to look any different from atom to atom. And remember that protons, the positively charged particle. Now, atoms are teeny, teeny, tiny. And just to give you an indication of just how small this is, uh, a gram of lead, which we could easily weigh out in the balances in the back of the room, has about 2.9 times 10 to the 21st atoms. Now, that is a multitude more than the people on the earth. And it just fits in a tiny, tiny little cup uh, on a way boat if we did that. So, atoms are very small, and hence because of that, we have to find ways to depict them. Now, John Dalton was one of the first ones. He conceived of, his, of an atom as much like a billiard ball, hence the very uh, creative name, the billiard ball theory. It was called that for a while. I think Dalton is actually considered the father of atomic theory, really getting the movement into the right direction. And it's not only the true uh, conclusions, the, the, the ones where he was proved correct, that led to the next step, but sometimes the incorrect ones lead to the next level of experimentation. So one of the things he proposed is that all elements are composed of very small particles that we call an atom, and that's fine. We just saw that an atom is the smallest particle that still is recognizable, but he proposed that atoms were indivisible. Now, certainly, if we divide it smaller than the atom, we won't recognize it anymore, but we can. We can divide smaller. It's not just a hard sphere. So we would say that John Dalton was wrong on this aspect. And uh, new scientists have discovered better ways to describe the atom than as a billiard ball. Uh, the other thing he proposed, and people interpret this somewhat differently, so I'm going to give you my uh, perspective on this. He proposed that all atoms, if they're the same element, 
the atoms are identical. Now, we're going to find that that's, again, wrong. We may think so. You may think that all atoms of carbon are the same, but we'll see that the number of neutrons, the neutron is the neutral particle, has no charge. And I am hoping you know this from before. We'll list this so you've got a good list to memorize from. Um, but he was wrong, and we'll do some calculations. We'll explore those later. We're just getting to the simple aspect of what they, the scientists talked about. Now, Dalton proposed that atoms of different elements are different, and that was such an important discovery, and he was absolutely correct in that proposal. Carbon atoms are different than nitrogen atoms are different than uranium atoms are different than mercury atoms. And we will talk about what makes each element uniquely its own, you know, uniquely carbon, uniquely mercury. He proposed atoms of different elements can combine with each other only in simple whole number ratios. And that's correct. And that was an important proposal that is going to lead to chemical formulas, and bonding and chemical reactions. He said the chemical reactions occur when atoms are separated, joined, or arranged. Another way we say that bonds are broken, bonds are formed. That's what happens in a chemical reaction. And that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, if I take water, you're familiar with water's formula. If I take formula or water and break it down into hydrogen and oxygen, I've broken bonds and I formed new bonds. And I have new chemical properties and new physical properties. But I still have hydrogen and I still have oxygen. So he was correct. That is a correct statement. Now, the next guy who did a very good experiment was J.J. Thompson with his cathode ray experiment. There is a very good little video clip on this that if I can find it, and I want you to remind me to find this, I think it, it shows this cathode ray experiment very well. And what he proposed after watching this cathode ray, which sent electrons, negative electrons, moving that direction, Let's see if I can use a different color. Now, as those negative electrons were sent this direction, and he had, you know, this was kind of layered with a substance to detect them, all right? The electrons, as they went through these plates, the top is negative, the bottom is positive. Now, remember, he did not know that electrons were negative, but it was known that negative particles would be attracted to positive. And that is indeed what happened. The electrons were deflected downward towards the positive. Had it been a neutral particle, that positive and negative electrode would have done nothing to it. So a neutral particle would have gone straight through and a positive particle would have been deflected up. So he knew because it was deflected down that the particle that he had formed was an electron, which I automatically put a little negative there because we know that that is negative. And they are very, very lightweight. He found really the mass to charge ratio of this, and this was awesome. This was absolutely um, a correct. Okay, we call them massless, but they really do have a mass. They're a particle. Particles have mass and take up space. Okay, and they're negligible. They have mass. But they're so small, if we put them into our calculator, they really wouldn't show up, certainly not as a significant figure, which you should know all about by now. So then he said, man, I want to model my understanding of the atom, because remember, the atoms are teeny, teeny, tiny. And so we need either word pit words or pictures or mathematics to model our knowledge of the truth. And sometimes the model does a good job and sometimes it doesn't. And when I type notes, sometimes I do a good job and sometimes I don't. And I kept this in here so that you could see this as you're taking notes. That'll be something I'm going to be looking at to see if you watch these videos carefully, is if you caught this typo. All right, this, these are the electrons. I got my words mixed up here, so this should be electrons. So 
the, the electrons were like plums, pieces of plum swimming in a pudding, not really of protons, but of, of positive charge. It, it's not like a, you know alternating positive negative charges. It's more like this positively charged, this diffuse, positively charged almost force field, if you want to think of it that way. Not particulate in nature. And so that's what he proposed. And I think you know by now um, he was wrong. But him being wrong spurred on the next person. And for this next person, Rutherford, I am going to have a video. There's an animation online, and that's going to be one of your assignments, is to watch that video and talk about how Ernest Rutherford was able to prove that Thompson's theory was wrong. I don't know that he set out to prove it. Uh, that wouldn't be unusual as scientists to try to prove other people incorrect. It depends on whether they like him or not. I don't think that was the case here. Uh, but he did. He set up an experiment, had a hypothesis based on Thompson's model, and lo and behold, that was proved wrong. So you have to not only watch that video, but you need to take notes on that video. Very, very important. So that will be part of your grade. Okay, we have a couple more dead guys to talk about, and we're going to do that in the, our next video. So until then, this is signing off.